Hello all, welcome back to this new video. Yeah, this will be a, a little bit of a showcase of this yeah, Artnet LED controller basically, uh, which I've been building over the past couple of months because I realized that the ESP is a very capable hardware platform and um, well, Artnet controllers are still very expensive, even from China, they range up to 60 to sometimes 80 bucks for one node. And I thought, well, you can probably make that a lot cheaper using hardware that I already have at home. So that's what we've been doing lately. So um, yeah, this is the current Artnet node that I've built. Um, I have a opened up version um, right beside me, so I'll show you that in a second. But this is the, the Artnet node that I've been bu building over the past couple of months. It consists of an ESP32, um, some fuses, a level shifter so that the signal can reach all the LED strips. It's built on 12 volts, so you can power 12 volt strips. You can take out the 12 volt. Um, 12 to 5 volt regulator and you can also use this with 5 volt LED strips so that's great um, there's a WS2812 LED in there for status light a little OLED screen you see right here which is perfect because you can see what the how many LEDs are outputted how many outputs are used from these four um, what the name is of the node as well as the IP address which is great if you want to connect to it through your browser, which we're going to check in a second. Um, and there's a lots of settings that you can change on this thing, which is great uh, if you want to set it up, if you want to use multiple as well. Right now I have it connected to this little switch right here. The switch is connected to the router. Um, I got my laptop in the back, which is connected through Wi-Fi. And then I've got one of my own LED strips right here which uh, we will show, which we will use to show the output basically. So first of all, what's inside this little thing? I got one right here, which uh, is an open up, opened up version. So on the top we have an LED screen, which uh, you can see is connected right here to these pin headers. This is a PCB I designed myself, um, custom PCB with um, the level shifter right there. Uh, ESP32 right here, which um, houses all the, the software. We've got an Ethernet port, which is great because, well, most um, options out there, all, they all use Wi Fi because Wi Fi is built into this. But if you want to use this in a production environment, then relying on Wi Fi is a bad idea because it will most definitely go wrong. So that's why I added a, a W5500, if I'm not mistaken, which is great. Then some capacitors for some uh, high for some voltage um, filtering. Basically, all the outputs are fused, which is great. We got screw terminals, four screw terminals for the four outputs. We got a 12 volt input with screw screw terminals, which um, is necessary if you want to use higher voltage output. And then we got a DC barrel connector, which. Um, it's just there for convenience basically. This thing supports up to 60 watts I think. If you start pushing more everything gets kind of hot, especially the barrel connector, which you don't really want. Then we have uh, the WS2812 LEDs, like status light right here. Uh, you can switch it between 12 volt uh, or the 5 volt from the uh, regulator or you can use it as a, like using the direct input from this. So if you have a 12 volt LED strip or 12 volt LED status light, you can use the input as well. Um, let's turn it around because this is also part of where, uh, well, it was a little bit of a challenge actually to get this to work because, well, um, ordering PCBs with thick traces so um, all the power can get to the LED strips, it's kind of difficult, it's pretty expensive. So what we're doing right here is we took we opened up the solder masks right here, so all these traces, they're open when you receive the PCB. And I've soldered like a thick, uh, I just deposited a lot of solder basically around here to um, to kind of make sure that uh, this doesn't heat up, that it can provide all the power to the LED strips. So, great! Ah, and it comes of course in this uh, kind of nice 3D printed uh, case, which is kind of convenient, you can screw it in or whatever. Anyway, so... Here we got the 
interface, the web interface that's currently directly connected to the ESP32, to the RNET node. So right here you can see the LED screen. It says 192.168.1.5. So we connected it in our browser and this is the web interface that you're greeted with. So let's jump in and uh, see what we got here. So right now we're in the web interface of the ArtNet node. There's a couple things right here that you can set up basically. First of all is the ArtNet node. So right now we can change the ArtNet node name basically, which will show up in your VJ software, which we'll check out in a minute using Resolume. So let's say YouTube ArtNet node. Great, so once we save this, um, the ESP will restart, as you can see right here. And then once it's restarted, reconnected to the network, you'll see that the name actually changed. So we can reload the page here. And right now you'll see as well, the name of the, name of the node has changed. So this node supports 16 universes over four outputs. So four outputs times 170 LEDs or 510 channels basically is uh, a maximum of 680 LEDs per output divided over four outputs. So right now to make our life a little bit easier, we have one output and we only use one universe or one strip of uh, 98 pixels, 96 pixels, excuse me. So we will put this at 170 and one universe. The start universe, well, speaks for itself, universe number that it will start at. Then there are a couple of things that you can change here as well, which is the max LED brightness. So if you want to hardware cap the brightness of your LED strips, this is the place to do it. So um, depending on, like it doesn't matter how bright you're, you set the brightness on your VJ software, um, this is a hardware cap. So let's say you want it only at uh, maybe, or let's see, maybe 10%. Maximum 10% brightness if you put your VGS software at 100. This is the place to do it. Now, um, let's say you do not want to use the ArtNet functionality or any VJ software, then there's a couple of things you can try here as well. So first of all, we got the RGB test cycle, which is a perfect feature to see if your node works, if your LED strips work. So we can use that right now. We can save it. Let's see what happens. And we can see that the LED strip is lighting up. So let's say we just want to use a static color, maybe for some ambient lighting or whatever. Um, we can change this. So let's set the enable static color. We can save these settings to the node. And we can see that right now there's a static color. The RGB soft, the values don't really match up yet, but um, there's still some work in progress. So uh, yeah. Um, for people that want to build this node themselves and might have different um, pin outputs, for example, you can have a custom pin output right here. So um, don't change any of these if you use the, the, the same setup as I have right here. But um, if you build your own, then feel free to change these to the pin settings that you want. Uh, then there's a couple more features. I won't go too in depth into these because they're not relevant for this video, but you can set a static IP, which is um, pretty interesting. So if you have a static network, no router involved, then you have to set the static IP of each of the nodes. Be very careful when you use this feature, because if you set a static IP that might already be taken by another node or another device in the network, then you basically soft brick this node because you can't reach it through the IP address because someone else, something else is already using the IP address and it will not go into AP mode because it assumes the IP address. And yeah, you have to reflash the node to get this to work again. So we're not gonna use this. And then also because we of course use an ESP32 with built-in Wi-Fi, um, there's also the option to connect to Wi-Fi directly. So you don't necessarily need a switch or router or a wired connection, you can use um, the Wi-Fi and yeah, that uh, is basically it for now. Um, we will save these settings 
Oh, we're going to turn off the static color because we want to use the RNA. We will save these settings to the node. And then I will show you one last feature um, real quick. That's pretty cool uh, about these. So let's say you have this node set up in a place where it's hard to reach, uh, but maybe there's a software update or you wrote some new software yourself. And there's actually a way to perform a firmware, firmware update over the air. So um, you can compile your Arduino sketch and um, well, basically upload the compiled bin to the node and have it updated through this way, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, so you don't have to connect it to the Arduino IDE or connect it through USB, but you can do it over the internet, which is a great feature if you ask me. So um, yeah, this is in short the configuration page. Let's jump into our VJ software to finally get some light blinking. So right now we're into, we jumped into Resolume Arena and I will quickly show you how to get your node up and running and display some outputs. I assume that you have a basic knowledge of how Resolume Arena works and how to get it going. So right now we'll just quickly jump into our Resolume advanced output Arena. where I have set up a single output of 96 LEDs, the same length as our LED strip that we're using on the table right now. And well, you see that we, we have 96 LEDs and it's loaded into our dashboard. We can then go into our Lumiverse and select our target IP, which, well, it's beautifully right here, 192.168.1.5, YouTube Artnet node. So we will select that and immediately you'll see a beautiful animation display on our LED strip which is great news for everybody. Woohoo, party. So, well, it's time to party now. Let's get it going. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If Resolute you did, Arena. then feel free to download and, well, contribute to this project. Feel free to read the GitHub that I created on this project. Um, you'll find all the files that you need to reproduce this beautiful Arnet node. The 3D printed files are in there. There's a pre-compiled bin that is in there as well. Um, there's some source code which you can use to upload a version to your own Arduino. And there is uh, a lot of information right here of all the features, um, all the different things that you can configure. There's a link to the PCB that I've been, I, I've been using. So feel free to uh, order those PCBs and make a shit ton of these notes yourself because that's why I made this project in the first place. Um, there are some requirements if you want to compile this yourself. So I uh, recommend that you use Resolute the pre-compiled bin file that uh, I've made. But if you want to compile this yourself, make sure to, that you've installed all the proper libraries, that you have um, got the proper board manager because um, with newer versions of the board manager, Something goes wrong, I don't know what, but uh, yeah, there we are. Uh, these are all the supported LED ICs that you might want to use uh, on this thing. Um, some are tested, some are not tested, so um, little dis uh, disclaimer is required right here. And well, um, I'll leave you to it. If you want to order one of these things yourself, then that's also possible. I've made uh, Etsy um, where you can order different versions of these. So we got a DIY kit where you, I'll just provide all the components to you. You have to solder everything yourself. Um, that's if you like doing that kind of stuff. Then there's a bear controller without any of the um, casing and without the OLED screen. So oh, maybe you have a 3D printer yourself. You can save Resolute yourself a little bit of money. Arena. And then the top uh, pick is 75 bucks. It'll come with pre-compiled, -com, pre pre-built. You can use it for anything. And well, if you don't like it, feel free to flash your own so software on it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and um, well, happy building. 